Hello and welcome to the session Object Detection with On-Camera AI. My name is Patrick Schick, I am Product Marketing Manager at IDS. And in this session we would like to discuss the benefits of using artificial intelligence to detect objects running on camera. But before we start, I would like to give you a short motivation of the topic deep learning in general. So deep learning comes into the place when rule-based machine vision comes to its borders to its end. So like the question, is this a zucchini or a cucumber? Both have has the same shape, the same, nearly the same size, the same color, and it's hard to define parameters to classify this vegetable. On the other hand, where is the error? We see this piece of cloth where a lot of weird structure are on it so there are no clear rules for describing how this should look like but with deep learning we could learn what is good and then automatically we can detect okay there is something which didn't look good we speak then there from anomaly detection another part is when it comes to application where we don't know up front where items are placed or where the outside shape, like in the case of the cake, is not really clear because it is a kind of natural product and it may differ between item to item. All these are examples where deep learning can play its full power. And besides the algorithm, we now have also hardware available where we can let run deep learning in a pretty fast way as the next example will show. A short scene from a James Bond movie where we see that in real time it can detect and locate these items. This talk focuses on the topic object detection so in this case i would like to bring this term into an order with uh, the other terms which normally used in deep learning so first of all a classification we speak of classification when we assign the whole image to a dedicated glass so after showing an image to a network we know what the scenery of the image shows in this case, we have a complete sandwich. When it comes to object detection, we can localize objects and classify them on the image. So here, the net detects the single items in the image and uh, classifies them. So there is a radish slice, there is a cucumber slice, and again, a second radish slice. Now we have the possibility not only to know what is inside of the image, we have also coordinates from the areas where specific items are. For example, the cucumber slide, we can check if it's really in between those two radish slides. We could give this to a gripper, to a robot, to handle the object. We could also start counting. Okay. Our sandwich also always should have two radish slices and one cucumber slice. Yes, that's given here. And last but not least, there is object segmentation. We speak of object segmentation when we really pixel by pixel can identify where the items are. So it's not only a bounding box. Now we can also, for example, uh, measure the area which is taken from the item. So we could check if the cucumber slice has the right size or is it too small or too big for the sandwich. We could calculate weight. We could calculate the, the middle point of these items to then give this to a next step in our machine vision application. So side by side comparison, classification, we classify the complete image, object detection, we find items Inside of the image, we draw a bounding box around them and classify the objects. And object segmentation 
with a pixel-wise segmentation of the single objects inside an image. So in the, the following talk, we go deeper into the, the part object detection. So, but first of all, I would like to answer the question why we should use artificial intelligence for this. We have a lot of different other machine vision technologies which we expect it could help us in the cases I've shown. First of all, artificial intelligence is robust against high variance in the same class. Everything you see, there are all cucumbers, but they have different colors. They, we have a different lighting environment. We have low lights, we have high lights, and we have the possibility to train all those images and then our network can handle all those images. On the other hand, we have different shapes from different views, different kind of colors. With deep learning and neural networks, we can train those bell peppers to our network and the network will find the right parameters to classify, to detect those bell peppers in images. Think about a rule-based machine vision algorithm which detects or classify those objects in images. Hard to imagine one. The next question we have to answer is why we would like to let this run on a camera. We communicate more and more. We have more sensors available, more cameras. We have a much higher frequency where we transmit data. We add more metadata. We have images with higher resolution, higher frame rates. So this leads to the point that bandwidth gets a major resource and bandwidth is a limited resource in this case. So we have to reduce the usage of bandwidth. We can limit the resource usage when we try to get results as early as possible in the communication chain. So in this case, really have the results done in the camera. One example. Let's come back to the bell pepper example. Imagine we have a box of bell peppers and now we want to detect the, the good and the bad ones. For example, for an automatic gripping system to get rid of the, the bad ones. So normally we would transfer now an image to a PC and the PC would do the machine vision. We have a big box, we have a 12 megapixel sensor, with, we then have to transfer a lot of data. In this case, we use um, object detection to detect the single bell peppers. So as you can see, we have three bell peppers clearly identifiable in this image, so we can reduce the data down to these three bell peppers. So in one case, we only transfer the images of those three bell peppers to the PC and check them. A next step would also that we don't transfer the images to the PC. We take the, the images we have, the, the detected object, and give them to a next network. And then we can do again a classification on the image and see, oh, there is one with an anomaly which didn't look good. We have to get rid of this. And now we can transmit only the x, y coordinates of the, the bad bell pepper together with the info that this bell pepper is bad and has to be gripped out of this box. So besides transferring a big image to a PC, we only transfer a small amount of data consisting of the coordinates of the bell peppers and the classification of the bell peppers. So with object detection, we found the single objects, we can localize them, we can classify them, and so reduce directly the amount of data. But bandwidth is not the only challenge in machine vision applications. It's also often the topic how we integrate cameras into our system. In the next session, we discuss a bit this, the topic direct control. Directly let a camera control a machine. When you look at a classical machine vision, vision system, we have a, a camera. This camera transfers an image to a host PC. The host PC makes an evaluation of this image and based on the results, a machine it will be controlled. But you always need a PC in this setup. For a lot of applications, you need a high power PC 
which costs extra money, which has to be maintained, and so on. So as you bring the intelligence to the camera, the PC is not necessary anymore, or it's only necessary to visualize images. But what we clearly can say, if you have machine vision on an edge device, on a camera, you need a less powerful PC because you also transfer the result now to the host and the host can directly control the robot. You need a much more or less uh, powerful PC. If it is necessary, you can visualize the image still, but if it's not necessary, you can directly get the information through to a machine. And last but not least, we can directly control machines. With interfaces on the IDS NXT camera family, we can directly communicate with machines and send based on the result of the inference commands to the machine. Is this bell pepper okay or not okay? Do we see a bell pepper or a cucumber or a zucchini before us? So all things are possible with IDS NXT so that we can get completely rid of the PC. But still, if it is necessary, we can transfer images to a host PC and visualize also those results. So how we get artificial intelligence on the camera? First of all, you either need a whole bunch of images or a trained network. So let's start with the directly jumpstart part. You only have images. Then you take these images and provide this to a training platform. With IDS NXT Lighthouse, we offer a training platform where you only have to upload your images, you label them, and then we create a network for you, which then can directly run on our IDS NXT camera and do classification or object detection. So this is an easy jump to start if you're not really aware of deep learning, but you would like to start with it. On the other hand, if you are uh, still a specialist in neural networks and deep learning, we offer a net converter, which enables you to convert and process your net that it could run on IDS NXT cameras. Currently, it's limited to, to Keras networks, Two different ways which enables pretty easy letting deep learning run on cameras. And then how this may look like. I made a short example with the, the bell peppers in this case we shown before. We analyze our bell peppers. We took the, the area of interest. We provide, can provide it as image data. But in the next step, we could also give it to another network and this network tells us then okay the bell pepper in this AOI is okay or in this AOI it's not okay or it is based on the following class or we have a warning here which we then can directly communicate via gigabit ethernet or via the GPIOs into your factory environment. So a complete flow of data with decision without any PC. Last but not least, let us talk about applications where this technology is still used. On some of the applications we see now, you would also have in mind, uh, okay, this is easily be solved by classical machine vision approach, but have always in mind, as we have discussed earlier, we have sometimes high variances in the same class and low variance between classes. We have changing lighting conditions. And last but not least, we would like to let it run efficiently on an edge device, in this case, on our IDS NXT cameras. One example, cashier systems in canteens, for example, where this technology is still used. You only put your tablet there and then it, it automatically detects what is on the tablet and, for example, what's the price of it. So you can directly calculate the price and sell it automatically. Another example is detect and locate goods in, in a warehouse. For sure, for the gripping system, we still need 
3D data, which we provide with the Ensenso camera. We use then the object detection to identify which kind of good is in the warehouse and how could it be gripped. So change the gripper based on the information of the neural network. Tracking and counting, a typical application we also saw before in this James Bond movie, uh, measured the traffic on highly frequent crossing. And you see that the motorbikes looks, for example, totally different, but clearly identified here. A parking space application. This is one of the examples I initially thought, okay, why should we use deep learning here? Because we have white lines on the ground. We can clearly uh, distinguish colors. But after some discussions with the people here, they told, yeah, they also tried the rule-based machine vision approach, but they then often have the issue if it comes to changing lighting conditions or they have rain. Think about you have still a silhouette there, which looks different than the surrounding when a car leaves during rain and it's still occupied. For a neural network, this is not a problem. Also, when there is waste laying around uh, leaves or something else, the neural network is able to handle this. To summarize this shortly, with AI, you can simplify detection topics or make them possible for the first time. Think about the bell peppers. This is really hard to handle with rule-based machine vision. And running this on a camera reduces a lot of cases the need of an extra PC, which means we can reduce costs and simplify the complete setup of an environment. Thanks for watching. I hope I could give you an imagination how you can solve your issues using deep learning on edge-based systems like our IDS NXT cameras. If you have further questions, do not hesitate to contact IDS. Have a nice day.